some article, I cannot remember the reference, uh, so I have to you know, be clear about that. But apparently they found human remains, Homo sapiens, that could date back to like 400,000 years ago. And that makes it even more absurd that there should be no culture prior to the, to the pyramids. And of course, that, that's what also what uh, Graham Hancock is very co concerned with talking about, that the age of the Sphinx. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how that relates to the, the, the precipitation yeah, that resulting was, uh, from that comet impact. That, that, was, that must uh, have been 12,000. That was John Anthony West that, yes. uh, that started uh, thinking about it. And then he contacted Robert Schock, who went right. down there to uh, prove, he him, prove him wrong. Yeah, yeah. He was, went down there yeah. to prove him wrong. And then it, immediately when he saw it, or mm. more or less, he, mm. he, he realized that there is something here that the, Egypto the, Egyptologi the Egyptologists have mm. not... Uh, noticed yeah, because the, 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 a major heavy heavy rainfall yeah. for 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 a very very long time yeah and it hadn't rained in that part of the world for how many, you know, for how long after that in, in that uh, I think in scale since I think it, you have to go six thousand years back or something mm -hmm. or even more. more maybe yeah, more I think more mm. maybe more but the, the interesting thing about that map also is that it uh, defines the exact location in longitude of the, uh, the location of Antarctica, and yeah. but it also depicts it without ice. Yeah, so certain areas. Were, yeah, yeah. But mm. and it was f first mapped uh, in the what 1880s or whatever. 18, like what we 18, 1880s, I think, or 1818. Like yeah. 1880s. I think you cannot just deny that. I mean, I think, I mean to me, when I heard about this Paris map and this idea that well, it, human beings could be four hundred thousand years old at least, and then we're talking about some hundreds or thousands of years before that to develop, right? That is crazy. Uh, and then it becomes just absurd to have this idea that there was no Atlantis; it was just a myth. Everything was just barren before the Egyptians. So well, Atlantis uh, has kind of become a symbol of it, but you mm -hmm. have you, you probably had other civilizations too. Yeah. So well, well he talks about this. The, you know the, this uh, uh, Gunung Padang in Indonesia. Okay. Which is where they found they have this temple, and this one guy there that he mentions has dug down. Of course, he has got a problem from the Indonesian government because he's found things that might go down to like at least 24,000 years ago. And he talks about also in Indonesia, this uh, Homo floriensis, mm. where they were like one, one meter tall, like six feet. And uh, they were a separate race and they were eradicated around the time around 12,000 where this great oh. flood comes. And then, you know, when we're talking about um, archeological evidence, that was also something that really struck me um, that, <clears throat> Hancock was talking about how you know the archaeology or the, the prehistory as we talk about it today is based on like this much archaeological evidence when you think about mm. that with mm -hmm. that cataclysmic event I think it says that uh, a, a land mass on the size of China and Europe combined went under water not that the water rose but the, the land tipped yeah because the, well the, the ice melts so it lifts the weight, mm -hmm. but then the other part of the plate goes underwater, you know, so you have the double effect of that. And well, so that is in itself, of course, it's not a specific well, have this, proof, but... Have you, have you seen that? That's an illustration of... It's, it's a oh, hypothesis that when the impact, uh, when the, the comet hit, the, uh, the mm -hmm. hit Greenland, it caused uh, the Earth crust displacement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which you know... Um, it's uh, it's a theory by Charles Hapgood. He was also the one that uh, that came with the theory about the maps, mm -hmm. or not a theory. I mean, <laughs> there's obviously a problem there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fact. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but um, and and the Earth crust displacement theory is that uh, the poles changed position, like the so southern and northern pole. Mm. So so uh, south. Mm. This, uh, in the south, it became much colder, and in the north, it became mm. much warmer. Mm. And Antarctica changed a position of around 30 degrees, yeah, it was like is, is the theory. 200 miles north was supposedly to be located Antarctica, and then it allowed the air to not be frozen. And then with this, it went south. Yeah, so, yeah, so Antarctica was placed, was closer to, uh, uh, was further north before. Yeah. And... 
according to the theory uh, that also Rand Flemeth has uh, written some books about uh, that Atlantis was situated on Antarctica mm. when it was further north. So mm. now you would be looking in the wrong place if you trust the, the geology of today. Yeah, I, I, I suppose so. If you look at the, the accepted maps of what, what the world looked like before the Younger Dryas, well, you, you don't... You don't see Antarctica f further up north. The, 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 the Earth crust displacement theory hasn't been, hasn't been accepted and, and I can understand it because there isn't enough evidence for it. Mm -hmm. But then there is also a question how much, how much, uh, how, how is it possible to prove it? That's also a question. Yeah. Because it's a long time ago. Well, they have, they have been mapping Antarctica also with these x-rays and you can see that there's all these valleys under the ice mm. and lakes also and rivers all yeah. just working there and there's a lot of these little creatures that were not expected to live there like um like little sea creatures mm. like stuck to their stone and so on so they don't know what keeps them like uh, alive if it's some kind of uh, high temperature that comes from the volcanic uh, uh, activity that works there or there are some floods that come from the ocean inside those inner layers uh, but the whole uh, surface of Antarctica it's quite grand and yeah you can see these mountains valleys and so so wonderful but and, and you can also find uh, if you go on Google Earth you can find these these circles with inner uh, you know uh, um, shapes yeah, that look man-made because that's one thing that I learned from uh, Magicians of the Gods that apparently, I don't remember where the description comes from, but apparently the, the center of Atlantis were, had these concentric circles mm -hmm. with like, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, well, water. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that was the very center of it. And apparently, um, okay, so that could match the idea of some structure under the ice there, but then it would be Perhaps. immensely really really much more old or do you know anything about like the age of the ice and how it has different ages I, pr I presume if that theory should hold some kind of yeah I, that idea. has been measured uh, but i don't have uh, the numbers mm. um but then he I, a point he makes in in the magician of the gods is that again i think that's from the same same place where he describes the concentric circles mm. that apparently some ship or or members you know citizens of uh, atlantis were out on sea when this happened so they were just lifted up they weren't uh, just just taken by that, that flood mm -hmm. and so they survived and they could mm -hmm. in their boats sail over atlantis and look down on the on the ruins of it of course after some time that went down but yeah, then yeah. it wasn't uh, viable to live there anymore and he's making the point several times that there are cultures throughout the, the world, uh, South America and other places, where these sages come and teach them this knowledge. And I was just thinking what you, what you think about that, because it can sound like, oh, here they come to teach humanity and they're all just good people. It sounds a bit idealistic, but, but what do you think about no, that? But I mean, it, it, if something like that can happen, I mean, of course, this people that come from this place will try to start again. Mm. I, think, I, I think it's quite logical that, that uh, wherever Atlantis was, uh, they went to, to, uh, to the Americas and to Europe and built the pyramids. I mean, you have, you mm. have very identical pyramids in South America and in, uh, yeah. well, in Egypt and, and several places. And, and they have hieroglyphs, uh, as far as I understand, in South America. Yeah, yeah, which and, is, <laughs> and you then you have this uh, discovered this Goe, Goebekli Tepe, yeah, yeah, in yeah. Turkey, yeah, which also comes out a little bit from nowhere, this big like, quite big structure with this T-shaped form pillars, and they just have discovered the top of it, mm -hmm. but underneath what it seems is like fifty times bigger than what they have just revealed on the top, so it's mm -hmm. a, 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 an enorm an enormous um, place with all these gigantic pillars going down. And it was supposed that area as, uh, was identified as just hunter-gatherer people. But... Hunter-gatherers. Yes, but to build up something like that from... And it also goes to this um, 11,600 11, uh, years 
that is what they calculate that this mm. thing was made. Made. Yeah, at the end of the Younger Dryas. So yeah. Perhaps so, they they fled Atlantis. Or I I don't know, but it's else? quite quite strange, and I, I find shocking that suddenly some hunter gatherer people from from the night to the morning they can suddenly build up these quite huge mm. structures. But I think I think Hancock uh, once made a very good point that mm. hunter gatherers and well, what we call a, a advanced uh, civilization can can live together at the same time. I mean, they do today. <laughs> they do today uh, in in the jungle, and we are here. So, so that might have been the case back then too. Mm -hmm. well, without uh, without the question, of course. Uh, but let me read a little bit further from the Atlantis account because there are some other interesting yeah. things here. Uh, speaking of where the people went and so on. This power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean, or in the, for in those days the Atlantic was navigable, and there was an island situated in front of the Straits, which you call the Columnus of Heracles, which, is our, which are the Straits of Gibraltar. The island was larger than Libya and Asia put together, and was the way to other islands, and from the islands you might pass through the whole of the opposite continent, which surrounded the true ocean. For this sea, which is within the Straits of Heracles, is only a harbor having a narrow entrance, but that other is a real sea, and the surrounding land may be most truly called a continent. So it seems like he is describing the continent on the other side of Atlantis, which would be the, the Americas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and, um, and how big he says that uh, Atlantis could have been? Well, well, it's, it, Asia? yeah, yeah, but Bigger Asia, Asia. Asia at the time was the Middle East, mm. and Libya, well, you consider it no northern Africa, so bigger than northern Africa and Middle East combined. And the point well, that uh, the point that Rand <laughs> Flemeth uh, has made, and I think maybe Charles Hapgood talked about it too. I'm not sure. Is that is that uh, that fits? Exactly, it's exactly more or less the same size as uh, the Antarctica. Yeah. The Middle East and Northern Africa. So, but of course, you have a problem with the theory with Antarctica. Mm. For, first, it's uh, the Earth crust displacement theory. It hasn't been proven, as I understand it. Um, and it didn't face the Straits of Gibraltar, even with Earth crust displacement theory. It would be further south. Mm. So what are you left with? You're left with the Azores mm. and Iceland. <laughs> that, that movie, that Hollywood movie in, uh, that they made, you know, the cartoon, which is uh, oh, wonderful. Oh, the, the Atlantis. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. wonderful movie. They suggest that Iceland they, could be? In the movie, they go to Iceland. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Iceland, of course, was, was much bigger before the, before the younger Dryas impact. Mm. It was almost connected with Greenland. And you could imagine also, well, it's just uh, counterfactual, but that there are certain objects that we might have found that are actually are would be from Atlantis. Yes. But you think that they are from some... I, I have other... uh, some interesting things. Uh, Which one do you to, think no, I remember, um, uh, I think, well, did, didn't your brother talk about some sculptures? No, well, I, I have it here. I have it here. Um, because, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah, so, so, but, but first, some background story, because, uh, we, you know, when we made the Hunt of Old Nurgen, we, we, we asked that question, you know, where did, where did the Greeks get this knowledge from? Mm. Or did it just simply happen? You know, it seems like a lightning strike. The same with, uh, uh, like, civilization suddenly appearing 5,000 5, years ago, or as we know it today. And... And you, you can just compare it with uh, the, the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. Suddenly something changes. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. we yeah. know, of course, what happened. They, they rediscovered the Greek sculptures. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, one of the best things that Bernini made or Michelangelo, you couldn't... I mean, without the historical knowledge, it would be difficult to separate my, a Michelangelo from a uh, Alexander of Rhodes or a mm. Praxiteles. Mm. Of course, with the trained eye, you you can, I guess. And and but yeah, and you could easily also 
uh, can addition I, can of I take a look no, at no, that? no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> because so, so, it's, uh, it's so strange. Yeah, yeah, but okay. So, so, mm. so I talked with my father uh, a year ago, roughly, uh, about this, uh, about this problem. You know, where did the Greeks come from? And he mentioned that uh, he had been to Los Angeles and to the to the Getty Museum, and he had uh, suddenly had seen a, a sculpture group that looked very, very strange. He couldn't place it anywhere and that's that's this this one here mm. and it's called uh, a seated poet and two sirens but it like like Ald said uh, it, it doesn't look entirely Greek no I mean they say it is Greek but it doesn't look like it is from that culture I mean the, the um, well there are many similarities of course but the the facial facial structure is yeah, very it's different. Quite different. Yeah. And the clothing is a bit strange. Uh, the whole thing just uh, just has another atmosphere and and uh, I have yeah just take that. I have um, I have read about that yeah, sculpture that group. Yeah. So and when when did they say that they discovered this? I mean, wh well, okay. So they say they say that it's from Magna Graecia, was which was like Greek colonies in southern Italy, because they made terracotta figures in that area, and that's made of terracotta. Mm. But it, it, uh, it goes back to the same kind of proof that uh, Graham Hancock uh, picks um, to pieces when it comes to the age of the the, the pyramids, because there's a name of a pharaoh. There, then all the, the other pyramids must be that age. They have this idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that yeah. It, it is from his. It's his based on, on, on circumstantial evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, as you call it. Yeah, it's strange, but it, even it looks a little bit stiff. So the Greeks might have made improved it. Oh, I think I don't think it looks stiff. Um, you think so? Well, compared to some of the Greek, uh, the best Hellenistic uh, ones. Yes, maybe. absolutely. I, I think it, they dated to like four hundred years before Christ, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, but when you read about read about what they say about the sculpture group, it becomes even more interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is what this is what the Getty Museum writes about it. Uh, they say this group constitutes one of the most unusual compositions in the art of Magna Graecia, which is southern Italy, colonies in southern Italy. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the past, because of its uniqueness, the anomaly of its iconography and its purchase on the antiquities market. Many scholars believed it to be a forgery. Tests performed on the clay and polychromy, however, have attested to its authenticity. So I don't know exactly what those tests, uh, what those tests are, but I mean, you can you can probably date stones and, and marks like roughly, um, but you cannot date it exactly. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm wondering about the scale here. Well, how big are they? Uh, it's it's like below full full size. I, th yeah, I, think, I, I think, I'm not sure. That's what I thought. Yeah. And, and, uh, and further, since the group had, had been acquired through the antiquities market, there is no information about its place of discovery. It was only through an exegetic and stylistic analysis that hypotheses could be formulated as to its intended placement, significance, function and find spot. Thank you for checking out this clip from the Cave of Apollos. If you want to watch the entire segment, Head over to cavopellis.com slash donate and become a $5 patron. That will allow you to access all our Dark Flame episodes, bonus material with our featured guests, and more.